In this video, I'm gonna show you how I built this air compressor manifold setup that not only feeds pneumatic compressed air throughout my shop, but also cleans, cools, and dries the air. The way that it works is the main line from the air compressor comes into here, and then it's gonna go up this tube through these coils on this electric fan cooler, and then it's gonna go down to the first filter. This first filter is gonna get the bigger stuff, uh, moisture in the air, dirt particles, and different things. Then it's gonna come up to here to this better filter, and that's gonna get more of the moisture out of the air and uh, other smaller particles that this one missed. After that, it's gonna drop down and feed through to each one of these lines throughout my shop, all dedicated lines to get individual air pressures. Um, the drip tubes here, this will allow water to collect and condensation and then we can drop them down to this drip line. And it's going to be overall a very cool, dry air fed through the entire shop. Here's everything laid out and dry fitted together. In this video, I'm going to focus on the right side of the manifold from the electric fan down. The other couple pieces in the beginning should be self-explanatory after watching this video. The first fitting here clamped into the vise is the start of the entire air compressor manifold build that I just showed. This manifold setup will be one large single piece that's all permanently connected together. And it all starts with this first fitting that connects the manifold to the electric fan operated coil. I'm creating an offset right now with two 45 degree fittings. Certain parts of this manifold are going to need to be offset in order for it to all lay flush. To keep the fittings airtight, I'm wrapping the threads with Teflon tape, then putting a light coat of thread seal in, then tightening them together. Once they're tightened, they cannot be loosened, so everything has to be tightened to the correct angle before moving on to the next piece. As you go along, you'll need to be careful not to move the existing pieces while tightening on the new pieces. Otherwise, it'll mess up the direction the fittings need to be positioned in in order for it to lay flush and be lined up correctly. The bottom of each pipe will have a ball valve at the end of it. The black iron collects condensation and can be drained at the bottom of each line. This helps catch moisture and keep the air dry. It's a pretty messy job, so be prepared for lots of cleanup throughout the process. This is the first filter in the line. I'm using more of a basic filter to catch the larger debris and water particles in the air. I also have other videos showing how I cut and threaded all this black iron pipe to proper length and how I installed the manifold and hooked it up to the actual air compressor and many other air compressor related videos that should help you out. I'm using black iron tees with brass threaded fittings between this filter to connect it to the airline. This entire manifold took quite a while to build. It's definitely a bit of a process, so when you're building it on your own, just be patient and keep working through it, just one step at a time. I know a lot of people are using much pricier, fancier, and newer style setups for their compressed air system, but I've been really happy with this setup so far. It's been working really well for me. I break down all the details of my entire compressed air system in other videos if you want to check them out, but feel free to comment with any questions as well as your thoughts and opinions on this manifold. And let me know what style compressed air system you guys think is best. In the meantime, you can watch and build the rest of this manifold. Right now I'm trying to get the right angle on these different fittings to connect the next bigger and better air filter. We're using a 45 and a 90 for this one. The 45 is angled up to raise the pipe and the 90 is the transition to connect to the next filter. I'm using a half inch closed nipple between the 90 and the filter. Every piece in this entire setup gets threaded into each other and becomes one single large piece. This filter catches smaller particles and more contaminants than the first one does. The first one is to get the bigger main stuff out, and this one is going to catch all the things that the first one missed. You have to be careful when tightening down to different kinds of material. The top of this is cast aluminum and can crack very easily. I used a brass adapter fitting to come out of this filter cap to transition back to the proper size black iron pipe thread. Then I'm using another 90 and 45 to transition back to the longer straight pipe that we'll be using as a drip tube to help cool the air and collect condensation. Now comes the trickier part. I need to lay out everything to ensure each piece is the correct length to make sure that this last pipe is even with the rest of them. This is where math comes into play. It's called thread engagement meaning how much of these fittings will recess into each other after being fully tightened. The thread engagement on half inch black iron pipe is around a half inch. I needed this finished product to be 42 and a half inches, so it had to be 47 and a half inches long unthreaded to compensate for the five inches that it'll recess from these 10 threaded fitting connection points. Coming down the final end of this manifold will be four half inch tees, followed by four half inch ball valves to create four individual ports. Each one will be individually pressure controlled with its own adjustable air regulator. 
creating four individual airports to feed four separate dedicated airlines at four different locations in the shop. It's kind of like an electrical panel where you have your main electric coming in and then you feed it out through breakers to different locations. Now I can keep everything separately pressurized to each workstation's desired pressures. After I'm done tightening these down, I use a large zip tie to clean out any of the blue thread sealer that got in there. I was doing this earlier as well, I just edited it out. This part's a little tricky as well to make sure all of these T-fittings stay lined up with each other. At this point, you'll need to use a level to make sure all these airports are lined up perfectly. After we finish the end of this last drop, we will finally be done building the base of the manifold. But in order to finish this part, we need to thread on the last half inch black iron T and make sure everything is perfectly level and lined up. You gotta get it right the first time. Like I said before, once these are tightened, they cannot be loosened or they will break their air seal. After that, we just have to install our last half inch ball valve and we're ready to start building our pressure regulated airports. These ball valves also have to be tightened to the exact spot as the others. They need to all line up and match perfectly. That way it's not just functional, but visually appealing as well. Now here comes the fun part. To make each individual port, we have to come out of the half inch black iron T with a half inch black iron closed nipple, then transition to a half inch brass ball valve. That way we can individually turn each line on and off by opening and closing the ball valve. I generally leave them closed at all times unless I'm actively using that specific airline. Coming out of the ball valve, we're using a transition fitting to go from the half inch pipe thread to the regulator's smaller thread size. Since this is plastic, we're just putting it on hand tight so it doesn't crack. Coming out of the regulator is going to be a barb fitting to connect the air hose. Now I'm dry fitting the other parts to make any needed adjustments by re-tightening them to get them all lined up straight. Now that we know the T's are tightened to the proper angle, we can move on to installing the rest of them. Now we can finally get this manifold finished up. As far as the ball valves go, I also have another 3 quarter inch brass ball valve set up coming out of the compressor that I made along with this. That way I can shut off the air to the entire system, which I always try to do anytime I'm out of the shop or not going to be using it again for a while. It might seem like a lot of ball valves, but they all serve a different purpose. It's important to have a good compressed air setup that's not only functional, but also can be shut off at the proper locations when it's not in use or for maintenance. Building this was a lot of work and there were a lot of pieces to install, but at least now you can see exactly how I did everything and the process it takes to build one of these manifolds. Especially this last section since it has so many different fittings connected to it to control the airflow and pressures to the individual lines fed throughout my shop. We're on the last one now, finally almost finished. Now I'll have four different airline drops. One will be for the hose reel right above the manifold, which will be located in the very back of my shop. The second one will go to the front of the shop, both on reels as convenience airlines. The other two will be drop down pipes similar to these with three quick connect ports to connect different airlines and tools. One will be located at the two post lift, the other will be located at the motorcycle lift. And there it is, finally finished. Let's get this mounted up and check it out. You can watch how I get this connected to my air compressor system, as well as many other air compressor related videos. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed it or it helped you out.